You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Welcome to the Boss Hog of Liberty podcast on the We Are Libertarians Network. I am your host, Jeremiah Morrill. As always, I am joined by our co-host, Mr. Dakota Davis. Welcome. What's up? Our show is about our lives in rural Indiana. This is a show about the folks who are involved in politics. We promise that our episodes will be fun and an easy listen. We interview people who are influencers, elected officials, political experts, and folks that we just find interesting. Today, What, is, uh, what does Cap fall in? in that? Uh, well, so this is a celebration, Dakota. Episode 25. Yep. And we have been joined by our most highly rated guest in the history of the Boss Hog Liberty podcast, Kat and Agnos. Thank you. Well, thank you, first of all, for asking me back. Very excited, as I was saying before. Uh, I am Newcastle's biggest fan and the Boss Hog Liberty's biggest fan. That's amazing. Huge. We found Huge fan. Somehow we made a Newcastle fan girl. You are from northern Indiana. Yes. South yeah. Bend. Up, uh, mm-hmm. up Elkhart, Indiana. Elkhart, yeah. So the, the Elkhart goes up there would make the RVs and have the Amish people. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. And uh, you go to Ball State, Chirp Chirp and whatnot. Yep. Yeah. Chirp and, Chirp. And uh, so it's a nice 25 minute drive. That's where my day job, when I when I actually mm-hmm. go, my day job's up in Muncie. So it's not, not too far. Yeah, and uh, for some reason, we still haven't gotten lunch yet. No, we, Kat and I have talked about getting lunch and have still accidentally avoided each other. Strange had, how that works out, I huh? I had Porta Vallarta on Tillotson mm. yesterday. Delicious. And uh, didn't uh, didn't connect, so my apologies. It's fine. We I understand. Will. I thought you guys had a day scheduled where you were going to do that. We talked about it, and I got sick that day. Yeah. Oh, yeah I did. I had it was. I, it, was a, it was a show day, I think, but I got I get migraines. It's confession time. I get migraine <laughs> headaches, and it's bad. And, uh, they're, da, 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 da. They're, that's the world's tiniest violin playing. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Kidding, that's a very crippling issue, and I'm very sorry I, to hear I that. I can't wait until the year 2065 when we can project gifts out into the world so that I could project a gif of Mr. Krabs whenever he does <laughs> that in the SpongeBob episode. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, well, our cough button's broken. I tried it. Sorry. I, could, I couldn't save it. I, like, ducked <laughs> under the table. <laughs> These mics get everything. There are no secrets at all. There are no secrets at all. I didn't hear that one. No, she, she didn't. Did, she did good. Oh. Man. All right. So, uh, we were, we, there's a fourth chair, and it's empty. It is empty. What happened? We, uh, we were supposed to have Clay Morgan, and we normally record these on Thursdays. So, Clay is not with us this week. Uh, and Audrey, Joe, PV, to be Davis was going to join us. And I, we're probably going to get a little out of order on the show notes, Dakota, so I, I apologize. But, uh. You're way out of order. Audrey, uh, Audrey is supposed to join us and she poisoned herself. We'll, we'll just say that. So mm-hmm. we'll get to it later. But, uh, she's not here because she's, uh, she's, she's ill and, uh, hopefully she's hydrating. Right? She is very ill. She's very ill. So <laughs> it wasn't from the camping trip. We, we, we did preface it last week that, uh, my cousin Nick is uh, texting. He's very, very mad and unhappy that we are only on Facebook and not on uh, on YouTube Live. It's a you, know, you have to comply. You have to comply with the way that the network is set up. This will be on YouTube later, but if you want a live comment, you got to get on the Facebook. Right, exactly. That's the way yeah. it goes. Danny, if you could just get over here in like the next three seconds and yeah, come on over and sit in. Yeah. Seriously, <laughs> there's a seat for you. Have fun. You can be here in five minutes and uh, DM Dakota. He'll get you an address. We're right. we're north of Q Avenue. That's all we tell the public, people in the public. Yeah, we don't want people outside the door asking for autographs or pictures <laughs> in the studio, especially with the kind of tal- talent we have today and the stories that are going on, the rumors that are out there. I know the, my the mom liber- will be outside. The libertarian paparazzi <laughs> will be out in force. <laughs> yeah, my mom, my dad, and my sister on a good day. Yes. Well, they they want to see you any way they can. I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. Fall break wasn't enough. No, probably not. No. Nope. You look at her bragging about getting a fall You're, break, Dakota. Yeah. Your fall break's already over? Yeah, it's four days. I get a fall break in like uh, 38 days. Oh. It's called getting married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if she survives that long. Yeah, man. Not looking good. We're hoping. We're it's hoping. Nasty stuff. Oh, man. All right. So, yeah, we took a camping trip over the weekend. We did. Yeah. Um, kind of. 
Well, I camped. You took a camping trip. I, I camped with, I just went with, down like with normal. With the Potters, and uh, they have a luxury, you know, 38 foot camper or whatever it is with multiple side outs. So this it's, it's bigger awesome. than most apartments. That, be, that yeah. camper was awesome. I, they had a kitchen island. I've never seen a camper that has an island in the kitchen. Like, mm-hmm. what is that? How does that even work? It's crazy. Uh, it's, it's so cool. You're welcome from northern Indiana. Yes, I'm, I'm sure it was built there. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it was built by your, sure. your slave Amish labor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't talk about Dr. Yoder like that. Oh, my goodness. Dr. We, Yoder. They're, hey, they're all we Yoders. Don't, we don't talk about the Amish. They uh, they typically don't stand for the national anthem. Mm. So we don't we don't dabble in that. Yeah. Well, that's, man, we're prefacing all kinds of things that we're going to have today. Disrespectful. Oh, so yeah, we, uh, we, we went and camped. Dakota, Dakota got too drunk and forgot to show up on Friday night, even though we counted on it. We were expecting him. <laughs> I got too drunk? I think I so. I or we were tired. I don't night. know what excuse he gave me, but he didn't show up Friday night, even though we planned on spending the whole weekend together. Like, no, it was just like, like eight friends. o'clock when we got down there. I was like, oh, I'm not driving. Screw that. I'm just building a campfire out here. <laughs> mm, that's the way it goes. And then uh, we said, oh, it's okay. We'll just meet you for breakfast. Yep. And then uh, yep. we texted. Said breakfast is be ready in 45 minutes. Yep. Not a word back. And then I woke up at like 9, and Andre had already had breakfast made. And apparently she had been telling me while I was half asleep. And I was saying, okay, I'll be over there. But I was still asleep when she was talking to me. And she came barging in the room, and she's like, what are you doing? I said, uh, I've been sleeping. What are you talking about? And she goes, I've had breakfast made for 15 minutes and you said you were going to be over there. <laughs> How dare you? 15 minutes. Mm. Yep. Doesn't take long for eggs to go cold. Yeah, that's the way it goes. It doesn't. I had to warm them up in the microwave and then my my fried eggs with runny yolk turned in. Oh, mm. my God. I'm a mess. <laughs> Jeez. Go on with your yolk. What was it? Oh, yeah. They were. It was hardened. Uh, <sighs> Nothing worse. Nope. Hmm. Jeremiah's texting. I'm, I'm bringing. I'm bringing in the backups. Are you texting Danny? Are you texting Danny for real? Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. I you let think, yourself in, Daniel Paul. I don't know. If, have I met him? Uh, yeah, I think he's been at some of the stuff, some of the parties. We, yeah, I just. He, he, he looks has. a lot like me, but about half the size and much more gray. You'll you'll see him in a few. Okay. And yeah, I know him from online. He's, uh, he's not as bald though. Okay. Yeah. Oh. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you be nice to my friend Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. That Man. was for you, Danny. So Saturday. Uh, Saturday, we, we you did finally make it. We went to Metamora. It's like going to the state fair. Have you ever been to Metamora, to the Canal Days? Mm-mm. It is this festival in a town of like 800 people that stopped in 1850 or 1860, nearly dirt roads, mm. no cars on the roads. It's like there's a big canal, obviously, yeah. and all these old buildings. They haven't built anything in forever. There is a, uh, there's a miracle uh, cross in there in Metamora. Did you see that? On the hill? The no, big- no, 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 not the, uh, not the castle. The uh, there's in one in one of the shops, like on the side of one of the shops, there's a little room, and you can go into this room and there's pictures of people everywhere and there's this uh, like glass box that ha- that hosts a golden and bedazzled cross, hmm. like the Christian cross, that is like three and a half feet tall, maybe a, a foot wide, and there's like all these stories about miracles that have happened. From the cross and wow, yeah, I've not, uh, I've not not been there. I haven't checked that out. But yeah, yeah, Saturday I mean, was the, not, was real. not the day to see anything. It was, it was like state fair traffic, unbelievable. It was hot and uh, it was it just it was crazy. It, it took us. It's on US fifty two, so you can. Get, it's big. It's a big attraction from Cincinnati and Indianapolis, and I guess every hick town in between. Um, but you take fifty two out of Brookville, and we got stopped, and it was my phone chirped, and it was like, "There's gonna be a forty five minute wait." Mm-hmm. On the highway to get to this tiny little town, yeah, it was Yikes. real. It was that bad. Uh, yeah, we went. We went last year uh, with uh, Audrey's family, mm-hmm. and we sat in that traffic, and it was like nine in the morning, and there were so many people already walking around and everything. And I was like, well, maybe it's not going to be that bad since we're going at like twelve thirty and said nine o'clock. Every, you know, right when the shops open and everything, it'll have calmed down. And then you send the picture, and you're like, we'll be ready to wait in line. And I was like, never mind. No, we're not going. And she Yikes. goes, "She goes, you want to go get Mexican instead? I said, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, you did. So, again, you ditched us our weekend together. We didn't spend Friday night together. He ditched down on breakfast, mm-hmm. and we didn't do lunch. 
And it was like it was like five or six o'clock in the evening by the time we got back to the campground and they finally moseyed on down because, you know, it was always, well, the dog needs something. Now he's worse than my parents with their dog. Mm. Oh, the, you know, Daisy has to poop or Daisy has to eat or Daisy, you know, Daisy, Daisy, Daisy. Hmm. She's in the other room. I can uh, bring her in here. And she can bring tell, her in. Until Danny she gets here, we should let her sit in the seat. Yeah. <laughs> so, we already uh, have a cat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do have a cat and a new dog, right? Yeah. Probably wouldn't get along. So then uh, we it started to rain. Aaron Ewart joined us, uh, our, our friend ah, Aaron. yes. And uh, his lovely family. And uh, they, they were going to camp. So they, they set up. we set up a tent for him just before dark. And we kind of hung out and just we ate dinner and... Uh, like the most unbelievable storm pot started. It was raining. Dakota, it was, uh, it we is. were so crowded under this little 12 by 12 awning or whatever it was. Yeah, I mean, it would have been raining all day. Yeah. Like on and off, but we had enough breaks to where we can like roast marshmallows and, you know, do regular camping stuff. And Aaron's kids were there, so it was fun for them. They were playing frisbee and having a good yeah, time. Yeah. Mm. They and then, stole bikes from somebody. <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden it's like this. You know, like the in the movies where it's a clap of thunder, and then all of a sudden it mm-hmm. the heavens open up and buckets of water come pouring down is yes. exactly what happened. So it was all of us inside of the camper, which at that point is whenever you could really appreciate how large how luxurious it was, was and the amount of yeah. space we had because like everybody had a place to sit. I know mm-hmm. David Herring said that it's an RV is not camping, but Real camping would have been miserable. Well, glamping. Yes. It was great. Glamping. Uh, but then we looked back outside, <laughs> and it well, looked we like... we heard a huge, like, crash. It was like... A, it sounded like a car crash. Somebody and was praying to that cross for to end the drought. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and so we opened up the door and the, the easy up awning, and everything that was underneath it, all of our chairs, cups, uh, coolers, just thrown like five to ten feet off to the side and dismantled. Jeez. It was the closest thing to Katrina that Metamora had ever seen. <laughs> or, or, or not Met- Metamora, I guess we were at Liberty, right? What, what, what's yes. that called? We were at Mounds State Recreational Area. Uh, I think that's technically Brookville. Brook- is that Brookville? Yeah. All right. It's somewhere in between. But yeah, it was, I mean, I was considering calling FEMA. It was that Really? Bad. Yeah. Well, I wish I would have gotten an invite to, you know... That's that's for Blake. Game with Blake. Yes, it came up. It's very humid in here. I'm drinking my my vodka soda. Blake Morris uh, is checking in on the Facebook Live. Yes, definitely vodka soda. Still staying strong. Cat, cat brought us gifts. She brought coffee cake. I did. They were little coffee cake like they were sitting right here. <laughs> they were they so were, good. They, Dakota cleaned up the table. And, <laughs> yeah, and we. I was like, oh. I literally had one little crumb to try it to humor Cat, but I've been trying to stand very strong and not uh, not. They were good. No, so, uh, my uh, roommate's grandma gave right it to me. Oh yeah, just a little bit. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm. It's, you can't outrun the fort. Right? I'm not bittering. I'm South Beaching. I'm not. I'm not a, like a an eating ev- evangelical like Brett is. <laughs> Brett will drive you nuts with it, and I'm just like, that's eh, fine, no biggie. So and then cat. So cat brings gifts. We, we've had these gift these guests bringing gifts, and it's been fantastic. Yeah. Over your shoulder, Aaron Dickin brought us a uh, where I agreed with him on the internet, and he printed it out and framed it. So that sits up on the wall here. I was admiring that as earlier a, as a piece of uh, as a piece of boss hog of liberty. Foreverness. Right, right. It's like your first dollar. Exactly. First Facebook card. And then I had received a card from your last appearance. That's correct. Yes. From, from Catherine. I have here. it right here. It's uh, Dakota it holding even, it up for the camera. It's even personalized. It, it yeah. literally says Catherine. On Best it. gift I've ever gotten. My aunt got me a set of 200 thank you notes that were personalized. And you still got 199 left. 199 left. Thought I'd break them out for one thing. We can't wait to get one for the next awesome. one. So this is going to go up in the uh, in the studio as well. We have yeah, all of sweet. these. We have all of these spaces to go to has for us to put we're up gonna, our mementos. We're going to put it like this so that people can see the name and then open it. That's good. Yeah. Well, I have little boy handwriting. I don't have good penmanship at all, so yeah. I was a little nervous. But I, it literally looks like my handwriting whenever I was in like. Ninth grade. <laughs> yeah. No, that's... <laughs> Dakota has I mean, the most amazing handwriting I've ever seen out of, not just out of a man, but out of a human. Really? Dakota's handwriting is is very ridiculous. I, I write every day, though, like, True. extensively. Yeah. Can you help me? <laughs> like, it's a problem. Please, please help. When I wrote my, like, um, like SAT, ACT essays for, in high school, <laughs> like, the, the, like, mock graders, when it was, like, a workshop, were like, okay, so this is obviously, like, a boy wrote this, and I'm like... Actually, a girl wrote that, but you're close. Like, let's be real. <laughs> I'm wearing a denim shirt and a vest right now. Let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Subaru looks it says, amazing, though. Thank you. I just watched it this morning. <laughs> Subaru. It says, Boss Hog of Liberty, thank you so much for having me on your podcast the other week. 
I had a great time and was very impressed with how great your studio and content was slash is. Don't tell dear leader. You weren't supposed to say that part out loud. Uh-oh. Yeah, don't, don't tell this. We don't want to upset him. <laughs> Never mind. All good things, all good things. I was just <laughs> yes. complimenting them yes. on how beautiful their studio is. And that was before the, the official Lisa Crosby lights. I know. Amazing. I know. It just looks so good. I know. It's, yeah, oh, my. A, I, almost, she, I almost broke it. Dakota's going to call you a bull in a china shop like he does to me all the time. I know. Yep. So well, the other mom started that. Uh, well, that. I've heard that for my entire life. That's another just as long as story. you don't break the floor. I already did that. <laughs> uh, so the other big piece of news from the from this came this was in Sunday's paper. Can you do you see this cat above the fold in the Henry County's one of the leading newspapers, Henry County, the Newcastle Courier Times. Hmm. Councilman eyes state house race. Yes. Ooh. As reported on the Boss Hog of Liberty podcast. <gasps> Oh my goodness! Made the announcement Thursday evening during a live stream episode of the local political podcast Boss Hog of Liberty. Isn't that amazing? That's we have honestly arrived. so exciting. We are going to have to yeah. continue to. Uh, we're going to have to take down sound tiles just to fill fill all of Dakota's That's newspaper right. clippings. Did you see? In here. Uh, did you see that newspaper? Clipping? Yeah, and then we have the we have the one where we made the cover over there. Congratulations! It's just getting to be very big time. That's honestly and so, so this exciting. Is, this episode is a victory lap with Cat. Twenty five episodes. And she's been our most successful guest. Well, thank you. So, and the reason for that is because my mom watches everything I do over and she just over and over and times. Over. Yeah. Well, if, if Natalie could watch this a thousand times, it would help us so well. Are you friends with my mother on Facebook? Oh yes, yeah, <laughs> of course. Old uh, old Natalie better stand for the anthem. <laughs> and Are you friends with her too? I don't think I'm friends with her. I just you you see, see a lot of things. She that interacts she with yeah. the community quite a bit. Even though I just tell her not to, she just keep. Keep, she's like the little engine that could. Yeah. <laughs> Trucking along. Well, I'm sure she's going to get to know some of us very well in the coming months. Yeah. Um, all right. And then it, Dakota has a note here that uh, Sarah's dad, Kevin Potter, is a culinary genius. What's that about? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I forgot that was in the show notes. Yeah. Kevin Potter, which I know that Kevin's going to be watching this because he's like uh, he's like Natalie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To where he, he loves everything that you do. Yeah. And, uh, and and Libby, too. I know Libby's watching right now. I yeah. think Kevin's probably at work I, although, paying for that RV that we all get to enjoy. I don't know. Is it Survivor time? Libby said she's not going to watch she, this if it's during, uh, uh, well, during Survivor. Well, we're good until 8 o'clock, and then I think she'll probably oh, bail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she has very, her priorities. Very detrimental that we didn't start right at 7. Rupert over Jared Dakota and, and uh, Kat on the Boss Hog of Liberty. I understand. Right. He ha- we have a sign. He's dedicated in the corner right there. It says Rupert for governor. That's right. But, uh, yeah, Kevin... Okay, first of all, Kevin made uh, chili. Texas-style chili. Yeah. They used to live in Texas for a while. He made it over the fire in a cast iron uh, pot. That's good. And it was phenomenal. I ate like a bowl and a half of it, and then he starts making these little things. He has like little Texas smoky sausages, and then he starts wrapping them in bacon. And oh. I'm like, what are you doing with those, Kevin? He goes, well, I'm going to put them in this mixture with some seasoning and brown sugar, and then I'm going to cover them and bake them in the oven. <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? And he goes, yeah, you're not going to be able to put them down. It's just like candy. And It was like candy, wasn't was it? Was he right? Ugh. Was he right? It was awesome. It was so good. If you had only shut up Saturday night, you could have tried even more good food. Or I Friday could, night. I could have. And then, well, and then at the end of the night, he starts making uh, campfire pies, that little cherry pies. Yep. And he's making them with tortillas. And he's like buttering things and mm. then putting brown sugar on those and... I'm, it just dawned on me. I'm like, Kevin Potter <laughs> should be a contestant on Hell's Kitchen. Like, <laughs> that sounds great. Ugh. Yeah. And, and like that's uh, all he does is he just like lights a fire on the stove and then starts cooking over the fire and watching Gordon Ramsay just have a total meltdown about how there's a fire in his kitchen. I want to see that. I would pay <laughs> really good money to be in the studio you'd, audience. You'd pay good that. money. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a fun weekend. And he, uh, I had a thought and I've lost it. Okay, I, you got to cover for me. I don't know what it was. It's gone. You're right, Sarah or Elizabeth Potter. Yeah, she's she's, 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 she's here until late. <laughs> so what does? Uh, oh, by the way, no uh, no pasta in his chili, and it was amazing. Again, it was. But Audrey made some chili mm. on Monday, and she put noodles in it, just how I like it. Oh, Cincinnati and, chili. Yeah, and Incredible. I've been I've been taking it for lunch every day. No, it's not. See, Cincinnati chili is where you you be, you boil the pasta and you put it on the plate, then you pour the the chili on top. Oh, is yeah. it? But these people, these people, mm-hmm. they put they just throw their elbow macaroni in the chili. See, that that sounds totally fine with me. 
It's delicious. No, that's I good. Have, I have some left over that I'm going to take for lunch tomorrow if you want to try it. Well, here's the thing. Like, when you think about chili, what is it? Like, ground beef, tomato sauce, and spices? Right. That's what pasta sauce is. Sure. Yeah. But it's not pasta. <laughs> I think we're... It, it becomes goulash at that point. Agree to disagree. My mom, my, I, I don't my know. mom makes goulash, goulash and you bake it. And it's a fine dish, but it's not chili. I don't know. Your your mom wasn't trained by the same culinary experts that worked at the Tri High Cafeteria <laughs> because the uh, Tri High goulash did not have macaroni in it. So oh well. Well, the chili debate will have to hold for another day. What's this I say that so. I'm getting a tattoo? I, I've forgotten this conversation. Yeah, what's going on that? about this? Do you not remember that conversation? I said if I ever do get a, I think there was a contingency, and I don't remember what it was, but we were all going to get some sort of body modification. Right. And I said, if I have to get something, I would get the moral tattoo that my brother has and my cousin Donnie has. But yeah. I don't think I ever uh, committed uh, to it. Audrey's getting pierced. Oh, I, yes. Where? Uh, belly button? Mm. Yeah. Sure. She's getting her belly button re-pierced. It okay. was already pierced. It grew back. Actually, oh. she was. we were at the beach, and then uh, it was, her <laughs> belly button actually ripped out. Like, Oh, God. Yeah. Horrible. Okay. Uh. And then... Uh, <laughs> I, and then I said, I said that, uh, I feel uncomfortable. I oh, said weird. that, um, I mean, that's a totally true story, but I said that if we ever got to the point to where we were having between 1200 and 1500 downloads consistently, then I would let Audrey do a stick and poke tattoo on me live on the, on the air. I've heard those hurt. How do you do a stick and poke tattoo? You can buy, you can buy sanitary kits. Basically, you buy the kit. It comes with the uh, the needle, the grip for the needle, and it comes with the ink and the things to make your stencil. Mm-hmm. And you draw the stencil yourself, or a professional does it. And then they, then you can put the stencil on you, of course. And then you just take the needle and you dip it in the dip it in the ink and mm-hmm. just start poking the skin. I've always wanted to get a tattoo done that way. Weird. I have I have multiple tattoos now, and I've. Uh, yeah, you need it's to just, you need to go downstairs and unlock the front door because Danny can't get the in. Front door's unlocked. You've locked, locked him out. <laughs> okay. Oh you man, you, you and I have to re- uh, you and I have to do the uh, the hard work here for a minute. Oh, no problem. Uh, sending or texting. Sending Dakota now. <laughs> but would you ever get a tattoo? <sighs> I'm. I probably not. I. I mean. I agree. If I have to, like. It's a family thing. If the entire family did it, maybe, probably, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I, yeah. it, it's, it's not something I have to get. Yeah. I, I, I'm like, I've always, the joke I've always made is I'm not committed to anything. I'm not committed to like, right. Of course I am committed, but I'm not committed to my family enough to put their name <laughs> on me. And we're not sure, like, obviously Danny and my cousin Donnie have gotten a tattoo now. So, um, I guess that's the one that we're, that's the official family crest. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I, yeah, I haven't, uh, I just, I'm probably too chicken too, because I watched Danny do it, and he was it went it went from like the top of his chest all the way down just to the tip of the nipple, and it was when they got down there, he was not he, okay. He was, he was ready to bite down like he was doing medieval birth videos. Like, yeah, you know, it was it looked rough. See, I don't know. I just have commitment issues, so I feel like if I got a tattoo, about ten minutes later, I would hate it. So, and we have a guest. Hello. We do have a guest. I'm not we the keep only. having some difficulties with the recorder tonight, so some of this audio is going to get pieced back together from the, uh, probably going to get pieced back together from the YouTube, unfortunately. Uh, the, I was, uh, we had, Dad, did you say you would never get a tattoo? I just, I, there we go. Uh, I just, I'm the type of person to, if I got a tattoo, five minutes later I would hate it. Like, I don't like anything enough to get a tattoo of it. If I did, probably Harry Potter related, because I do love Harry Potter. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. All my roommates get them, and I really liked Harry Potter too. And then I turned like fifteen. It's, it's been fun. Thanks for having <laughs> me on, boys. <laughs> I I was wondering. I was like, oh. So joining us in the room now uh, is Danny Morrill, my baby brother. Uh, Dakota's probably gonna have to adjust the camera if Danny's yeah, actually gonna be on. But uh, you know, it's the way it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking. I was like, have I met Danny? And then I know you just from online. And I was like, okay, now we've definitely met. You know him from the internet. You have met him though. You do. You yeah. do remember seeing him around? Yeah, a few times. Right up on that microphone before me, Daniel Paul. You can put the headset on, and you'll hear yourself, and know. You'll know it's all working out. Considering that's plays. Yeah. Is this the mic I had last time? Where. Probably. It falls apart whenever you touch it. No, no, we fixed that. We've made some big improvements around here at the Boss Hog Studios as you look around. 
Uh, you've got a real mic stand now. The last time, you, I think you had the the tripod stand, and we've we've replaced that thanks to the generous donations of uh, of many of our uh, many of our donors. Uh, oh, Christy Avery, Love David her. Herring, uh, Matt Chapman. Who else has helped us out? Craig DeCosta. De, uh, just it goes on and on and on. We appreciate all of them, of course. Huge fan of Christy Avery. So um, yeah, so you're you're Christy Avery's uh, number one fan. I'm everybody's fan, and I'm not do- doing that to like be annoying. I'm literally just a fan of everybody in Wall. Cash just a happy person. I'm just a happy person. What can I say? There you go. You should be. So I have an interesting story on how I try to gain entry into this. Home. Yeah, c- right up on the microphone. Horn. Yeah, I I went downstairs. Hold on. A second. Go <laughs> I go downstairs and I go towards the was, front. door. Was he at the right house? <laughs> well, I go to the right house. Yeah. yeah, he was. I go to the front door and I'm like, "There's no one here." <laughs> maybe maybe he was texting Jeremiah and said, I'll almost be there, so tell him to have the door unlocked. And then all of a sudden I hear really loud knocking. And I was like, What where is that coming from? And I look at the back the back door. You can't get to the backyard. Which has a six foot privacy fence and a gate that is not accessible from the outside. If you're a ninja, you can. <laughs> I saw him climbing. He brought in a trees. gun, by the way. He brought in a long rifle for Dakota and I to play with this weekend. So you, we you, do not play with guns. Okay, for us to, it's, to it was to it's in a lock case. Had three beer, had three beers in it, <laughs> and your rifle for the weekend. Yes. So I threw my rifle over, and then I scurried over the fence and hopped it. And it is a six foot drop. I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah. Is your ankle okay? <laughs> They both are, surprisingly. But I, I thought, said, are you limping? <laughs> naturally, I thought, surely the back door's unlocked. But then I forgot the neighborhood he lived in, and they're all locked. Yeah. Mm. Just pull it back towards you, Danny, and it'll be much more much easier. You need to be within about an inch and a half, two inches of that microphone. There you go. You'll get your broadcasting down. I'm not used to things. <laughs> oh, you're there. close to my mouth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Larry Reamer, your friend, wants to know if you wore that shirt to blend in with the background around the studio. Oh, that does make sense. Danny is wearing the uh, the the black and gray plaid uh, plaid plaid to go with the black and gray studio here. It's very nice, beautiful man. So I have messed Danny up. This is our first I- tragic recorder episode, by the way. We're on it now, but last week Dakota got a new podcast, a new uh, a new computer, and we left the um, the media card in the laptop. So we recorded the first portion of this podcast onto the onboard media, mm. and then. It stopped like two or three times, and I thought I didn't start it. So I've been somewhat distracted by that terrible set of events. But I think we'll be able to splice it back together thanks to the uh, the lovely YouTube feed. So your audio qual- may- quality may be a little bit questionable for the first portion of this podcast, but I think we're going to save it all. Good. So I apologize. So I'm just seeing the show notes for the first time. Yeah, we're uh, we're almost to the Garth Brooks concert. I, but we're still on Jeremiah is going to get a tattoo. That, Dakota <laughs> yeah. prepares the show notes, He's and I don't a, really get to decide. We, we had a deal. He's and I'm the only brother like that you. has one. Well, that's, I said that would be the one that I would get if I got one. But you said you would. I said I would consider it. So, Jeremiah, I've been thinking about getting one going down my forearm here. Will you go with me and do yours at the same time? If I get sponsorship. And we can record it. I'll be cheap. If I, I get sponsorship. I will personally sponsor that. If I get sponsorship. <laughs> there we go. You got and it. And we get to 1,500 <laughs> downloads Done. three Cat episodes Agnes in a right row. 1,500 three episodes in a row. And I get it paid for. I will get the same tattoo Danny did. Fifteen hundred. I said twelve hundred. I see. I just. I'm love getting my family. I'm getting. <laughs> I'm getting my yeah. body modified for the first time in a very serious way. It's not that it's, serious. Nothing is. in life is really serious. It's, you're all just gonna die anyway. So it's feels it, serious. Nothing yeah. really matters at all. If you think you're not gonna it. get out alive. No. No. But I'd like to go to heaven, and Leviticus says I can't. <laughs> That's the uh, how Bible. many fabrics are you wearing? That's right the now? Bible verse I want to get tattooed on my foot whenever Audrey uh, stick pokes me. Which one is that? Leviticus eighteen twenty five. I don't know what that is. It's the one that says don't tattoo yourself. Oh right 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> how of funny course. is that? Like isn't that really good? Yeah, it's pretty funny. I'd do it. I like it. There yeah. We go. So uh, it's settled. That's what's happening. So we got through Saturday night. We lived. We lived through the storm. Mm-hmm. We did. Sunday was the Garth Brooks concert. Yeah, the big Garth Brooks concert. Apparently, it was Audrey's very first concert yeah. she'd ever attended. Audrey has never gone to a concert before. Uh, there was a uh, there was talk she was going to go with Greg Lenz to a Florida Georgia Line concert at one time, mm-hmm. but then it turns out that Greg was looking at a different music center that was in like Tennessee or something. And mm. oops, yeah, so they weren't able to go, and she was like. 
Be careful. He doesn't know how to read the fine print. Sometimes I've read that. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it's in your in your new endeavor with Greg, mm. just make sure you make sure you get your locations right. Oh, okay. You could Thanks. be hundreds of miles off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so sweet of you. Thank you, Jeremiah. Always looking out for you, Kat. Mm, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So it was it Audrey's was, first concert. It was Audrey's first concert. It was my millionth concert. And I, I've gone to a lot of concerts in my time, mm-hmm. my short amount of time. <laughs> I've gone to... First one you'd be able to drink at. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've been to folk concerts, comedy concerts, Irish metal rock mm. uh country rap i mean just name it i've i've been to the concert you know it's i love going to concerts i love the shows i love the entertainment and all the fun that everybody's having at the concert it's just it's a good atmosphere i love to do it and i'm not a huge country music fan mm-hmm. and you knew that right but you were and, a garth brooks fan we kind of bonded yeah. over that earlier in the year right and over I'm, that summer being so damn inappropriate that we yeah. said we're gonna when they announced the concert we were gonna go yeah and i'm i'm like okay i never would have guessed in a million years that the best show that i would have gone to would have been a country music concert really with a 55 year old man playing it was phenomenal really? i think as far as entertainment aspects go i Garth Brooks is 100% definitely the best concert I've been to as far as atmosphere goes. And, mm-hmm. like, the, the fun would probably probably have been the Flogging Molly concert I went to in the Egyptian Room because the atmosphere in there was amazing. You had the band on stage, and they were throwing Guinnesses into the crowd. And oh, it was wow. Just, yeah, it was a, a totally just strange atmosphere. People were crowd surfing, and... Like, the people, like, everybody in the concert, and if you've gone to metal concerts, then you know this especially. Like, everyone there, it's like a community that you that you walk into. So you go in there, and, like, everybody is just, like, they don't even look at you as a stranger. You're just friends with everybody automatically. Mm-hmm. And that was the atmosphere there. And so we, people start crowd surfing, and you just get annoyed. Like, there's no fun in other, in carrying other people. <laughs> and... So we just like everybody just starts pushing them towards the front where the security guards are, and mm-hmm. we just dump them over the fence, and the security guards take them to the back. Like <laughs> nobody made it, nobody made it to where they weren't taken to the back by the security guards. Wow. But yeah, the Garth Brooks concert. Yeah. Well, 100%. and this one was special for them because they had done they did they, they this was like the six millionth ticket they've, ticket they've sold to this world tour. So behind Danny is actually a shirt that they passed out. They gave every single person in the in the audience a t shirt and a towel. Now where was this and concert? It was a banker's life. He's sitting oh, that's the, Pacer, a good one. the Pacer Stadium or Pacers Arena. I've, uh completely yeah. full. <laughs> completely that's a good full. One. That's not a shirt. No, this is the towel. Oh, that's the towel, yeah. This is the towel that they gave us. And then, you know, the the sponsor. It was all sponsored by Amazon. Amazon. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you've got like his entire collection apparently for free. Uh which wow. is pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But it was literally like the loudest I've ever been. Like not not the music being loud, but the crowd noise. Louder than any Colts game, any Pacers game, Indy 500, any event I've ever been to. It was ear screeching. Wow. It, yeah. it was it was unreal the crowd. And he put on like it was just Dakota's right. It was a, the performance value was just crazy. So Yeah, it was If you get the chance, go see Garth Brooks. And then we So we're sitting there and the the uh the opener was a uh, what was it? Crap, I can't. Uh, something it. Russo, Keith Russo, or something. He's uh, he wrote one of oh, no, that was, songs. That was Mitchell Russo. Mitchell, yeah, Mitch yeah. Russo. And, and then, then and then the middle act was just Dan it was and Shay. Hor- horrible. Really, it was Dan and Shay. You probably know Dan and Shay. I feel like that sounds familiar. They're like rascal uh, flats, but more they are, but more gay. They're huge in modern country. Wait, they're not good though, right? I didn't find them to be good. They're, all they're of the fine. you probably would like them. All of the girls there like them just fine. I'm not a big, not a huge country fan. Mm, lesbian, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. The uh, the one dude looked like Zac Efron. He was in like a cut off shirt. Ooh, white, all of a sudden a I love them. Oh yeah, you like them now. <laughs> and then the other guy looked like uh, uh, looked like looked like Lee Markham from Jack's Donuts. Uh, oh if he, if my god! If he had a country concert, like he, I did not even think of that. Yeah, that's exactly what he looked like to me. Wow, that is crazy. Is uh, is that close? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was so good. Yeah, it's like he was. Uh, Although I'd like, this is gonna sound like I'm a flaming homosexual, <laughs> but he had a he had really nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I didn't want to say anything, but today's your day. National coming out day. <laughs> yeah, it is national coming out day. So apparently, Cat came out as being straight, shocking everybody. I know. Yeah, and uh, shocked funny. to the world. Yeah. She drives a Subaru, uh, wearing a denim shirt and a vest. And I know. Thought I'd dress sporty because I'm in Newcastle. She had like four out of the five tears of lesbianism. I know. Before. I didn't see her shoes. You're wearing Birkenstocks or no? Converse. <laughs> Converse. Converse. Yeah. Uh, you know. You know. Chuck Taylors. Chuck Taylors. Chuck Taylors. Yeah. Is there any other kind? At this no. point, mm. it shouldn't be the low tops. I'm not a fan. I like the classic high tops. Yeah, um, I'm the same way. Yeah, I used to when I was little. I had a pair of black, like black ones. They were nice. Now everybody either has black or white. I went with gray, so I can you know appeal so to both sides. Different. So it can be different, but so you can swing both ways. Right, exactly. Man, <laughs> I used to have a pair of black ones. I actually played basketball in them. They're a good shoe. I, uh, I, I, Blake Morris pointed out a minute ago, I'm drinking the, uh, the vodka and Sprite, stir the vodka and club soda with lime. Uh, those were 11.50, so I quit drinking them after a while. They were 11 bucks at dinner at Granite City. And they then, were 11 bucks? Yeah. And then they were, they were equally as painful at, uh, Banker's Life. And you were paying 9.50 a beer at, yeah, uh, it was it's just crazy. Beer. Uh. I got the one. I stood in line for this beer, not even looking at the prices, and I had like six bucks cash on me. And I'm like, I can give them five and they'll, then they'll take it, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I get up there and it's 950 for a glass of beer, like a pint. And I'm like, holy cow. I was like, well, I just stood in this line for 15 minutes. I'm not going to go away <laughs> empty handed. So I just paid the lady and went on. And then like halfway through the concert, I'm like super thirsty. So I'm like, I think you went down for at least three over the course of the night. Cause I was, no, I, got, I had to get I up every time two. you moved. I had to get up. I had to. Wait, you paid? You only paid like five dollars of it? No, no. I, oh. I had to whip out my debit card oh. and pay with that craziness. Okay. Excuse me while I whip this out. Hmm. And then I looked at my my bank, and it was like, "There's two charges for nine dollars and fifty cents." And I'm like, "What the heck?" <laughs> He's like, "Oh, it's those freaking beers." There you Killer. go. So, they, the, but the uh, Dan and Shay played a song that's near and dear to your heart, apparently. Uh, Audrey loved Dan and Shay. Mm-hmm. And As we were leaving, she demanded. We were walking back yeah. to the car, and she demanded that you take her to a Dan and Shay concert next year. Yeah. Aw. And she also wanted one of their songs to be our first dance song at the wedding. <gasps> Which one? I, I don't even remember. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to totally do a fine. quick Google to see what they <laughs> perform. Yeah. Hopefully, they only have like three. <laughs> I under the I've been under the impression, like I've been helping with the music. I say all the time that Audrey has been a phenomenal fiance and ha- has. Taking care of anything without me having to worry about stuff. They do have good hair. They do have good You're hair. You're right. right. Yeah. All right. Let me see this Zac Efron look like. Sorry, Dakota, though. Go ahead. And anyway, so she's. So we're talking about the music. That's that was the one thing that I'm like. Better wanna, on Wednesday. I want to have a say. Is better on Wednesday. Harry's Harry's messaging better on Wednesday. He may. Harry, our our black correspondent, may be the country music expert we've been waiting for. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Perhaps. We'll when see. I pray for you. Well, what were the names of the, that's it. the act? Dan and Shay. Dan plus Shay, I think, is what it yeah, was. Yeah, that's, that's usually what it is. I don't know. The guy in front of me at the concert was like, he, he looked behind us and he's like, I don't want to ruin it for you, but there's a very big opening act coming. And I just, I, they already announced it on their Facebook page, but I don't want to ruin it for you. And I'm like, okay, whatever, great. I hope it's somebody that matters. And then it was this guy, Dan and Shay, and he's like live streaming it on Facebook for people. And I'm like, I have no idea what the hell this is. It was terrible. They literally do sound just like Rascal Flats. Wow. Like, the entire time that I've l- heard them on the radio, I've always thought that it was a Rascal Flats song. They are good looking. <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> have to excuse myself now. Well, well. They look great. Yeah. Wow. They're no huh. Greg Lenz, but I mean, come on. She's straight. Oh, boy. She's just attracted all the men now. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. So- no, but she, she said that I could help with the music. Cut his mic. Harry does not like me. He's not liking my uh, my. Uh, I'm very very upset. Very upsetting to to Harry Price. Who's, whose mic is he telling to cut? I assume it's me. I assume he doesn't like me picking on Dan and Shay. Maybe not. <laughs> or the fact that you called him. You know your black correspondent. <laughs> that, might be could, <laughs> that could be it. Well, this I, is Newcastle, so I do the best I can. We take him when we can get him. <laughs> Man. Oh well. So that was that was Garth Brooks, and then we parked uh, forever away. Dakota, uh, Dakota, and Audrey rode in with Sarah. Yep. Uh, they parked at the, uh, the the garage attached to Banker's Life, and uh, uh, for some reason, Dakota thought it was appropriate to lock his keys in the car, so we had to walk all the way back Ugh. to the car. 
uh, which is I, fine because I, I it was the appropriate thing to do to, to walk Sarah back to the car anyway. Yeah. But uh, but Dakota really didn't think about that when he locked his keys in the car when he wasn't riding back with them. No, <sighs> and you're, you're saying I locked my keys in the car like I did it on accident. I was uh, it's a deliberate, purposefully aware. I was like, okay. I'm not going to take my keys in there with me because I don't want them to accidentally like come unhooked or fall out of my pocket or something. Mm-hmm. Do you normally keep your keys leave? in your front pocket? No, I usually keep them clipped onto my side. Okay. On a chain. I just didn't know if you wanted it not to distract from the natural bulge. <laughs> 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 no, we're everything's all right there. It's okay. Nature. No problem in that area. But uh <laughs> I left him in the car and then I Jeremiah's like, "All right, we have to walk back." And I'm like, Oh no. Mm. We can't walk back. It was it was a good time though. And I looked Audrey up. Aud- the Audrey whole, complained it was a six mile walk back to Church yeah, Brothers the where we left the, was, where we left my car. It was funny. It was a mile, I looked it up. Just under a mile. It was a mile? It was just under a mile. Well it seemed like six whenever you're walking through downtown Indianapolis at two o'clock in the morning. Mm. It was a late night, but very worth it. So, all right. Anyway, moving on. Cat. The uh, next thing on Dakota Show Notes for us is that you went on fall break. Do you anything cool? Yeah, I did. Uh, no, not at all. Not I a damn thing. went home to Elkhart and I slept, and I went to lunch with my grandparents and my dad, and then I got my Xbox out and started playing my old games. What Xbox, kind of, Xbox kind of One, or Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Three Hundred and Sixty. I've never upgraded because I've been in college. Sure. What Why kind of you? games do you play, Cat? Uh, I was playing some Grand Theft Auto 4 and 5. Oh, my. Mafia 2. Oh, I love Mafia 2. So two. good. I was playing that. I oh, I almost took it back to school with me, but my that mom was such got, a good game. Like, it's beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Oh. Oh, loved it. Played that. Now I Grand hear, Theft Auto 5 is good, too. I, see, I like, I like the graphics and everything of 5, obviously, because it's updated, but I love the story and the characters of 4. I love the story of 5 more than 4. We have a, I have a fundamental disagreement with you on that. Interesting. I, I think it's just because I like the whole like immigrant trying to make it big in America kind of thing. It's the yeah. Agnagnos family story. Exactly. No, I like the white trash dude that's trying to rob a store with his rich friend. That's a good two. <laughs> <laughs> then he gets cheated Excuse over me. and he just stays a white trash dude. That's true. That is true. Now, Jeremiah, I hear that you're a big Minecraft player. So yeah, Dakota and I, uh, this He's is very going back embarrassed about three about weeks it. ago. I, I that is my favorite video. It's game. one of those things that we don't have to tell people. I don't but, think you should get that moral tattoo now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been disowned by my father. Yeah. If you have gotten it, take it off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, see, Dakota, I don't know how this came up, but we were having lunch with, uh, Dakota and Sarah and Audrey and James Niece at Steak and Shake in Newcastle, the lovely Newcastle Steak and Shake, Ugh. maybe three or four weeks ago. And Dakota had mentioned that he had, he was playing Minecraft. I was like, really play Minecraft? I, I used to play that game like three, four years ago mm-hmm. with Jason and some other people. And, um, he's like, yeah, I play all the time. I was like, well, let's, I, I totally, you know, stopped everything and said, we're going to go do this right now. We're going to, we're going to go play. And I made Dakota bring his Xbox home and, uh, to my house. And we set up and we played for a few hours and yeah, I that was, was the start like, of it. I was in his living room mm-hmm. and I had uh, my own TV and my own Xbox and he was in the other chair with his own TV and his own Xbox. So with the Xbox One? Yeah, the Xbox One. It's like I'll have to upgrade to play you with You may guys. have to. No, it, you can play with us now on it, on 360. I don't think the oh. 360, this is going to sound, this is, welcome to uh, uh, Minecraft chat with Jeremiah, uh, 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 <laughs> so Dakota. So i just leave the rifle yeah. and all. Yeah, Danny, Danny's gone. Yeah, just and, go back over the cat. fence, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, I don't think it'll work on the 360 is what I heard. But you mm-hmm. can do it on the PC or you can get the Xbox One. I do, I play PC mostly. There you go. My favorite so game. There we go. You're well, going to have to join our uh, our online game. Our little chat. Our yeah. little Our little game. Server? Uh, no, it's on, uh, it, it, I don't know. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. We, we start, right, we talking, still are figuring this out. We start talking about this, and James Niece is talking about it too, and I go, James, do you play, do you play Minecraft? And he goes, nah, man, I just host the servers for him. <laughs> I was like, and that's just this anomaly that surrounds James Niece, where it's like, you talk about 4chan with him, and he's like, oh, no, I'm a moderator, I don't really post. <laughs> and you're like, who is this guy? Like, there's just this cloud and shroud of mi- mystery. Yeah. So we've been Minecraft people for a little while now. And I, I, you know, last night, I think we played for a half an hour or so, just, just long enough to, to get started and quit again. Yep. And, uh, you've, you've been playing Skyrim. Apparently you mm. got out of work yesterday at 4.30 in the afternoon and played until, until you realized that you hadn't eaten or showered or done anything. <laughs> it's a good and game. He was totally unreachable. That's the truth. I, 
Actually, Audrey really wanted McDonald's because she's sick. And, like, if you're sick, then... You get whatever you want. Well, there's nothing better than a plain cheeseburger from McDonald's. Like, for some reason, it's just the best thing. And she goes, I really need a cheeseburger. And I'm like, okay. So I go to McDonald's at, like, 4 o'clock. And I head back to the house. And I put on pajama pants. And she's like, I'm going to take a nap. And I'm like, well, there's no better time. (laughs) Seize the day. So... I just put on my put on my headset, and I started playing Skyrim. Next thing I know, Audrey's like, "All right, I'm leaving," and it was like ten, <laughs> oh. nine thirty, ten, something like that. I mean, I played for like five hours. No, it's crazy. Just the time. Just yeah, it was. And she goes, "What did you do?" And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> "Did nothing." Danny and I used to play. We used to play Madden all the time. Oh, that was yeah. our game. We play Madden. Love and it. You play some NBA Live or stuff like that. Yeah, and I played some Need for Speed. And yeah, NCAA. Games. There's different games for all we kinds. Played of Call of Duties and <gasps> quite a few games. Yeah, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare Two, Modern Warfare World Warfare One. I was a uh, fourth prestige on Modern Warfare Three. Really? I used to. I used to be a gamer, and yeah. then I came to college. There's just no mistake. time. You got all these things to do now. I know. Right. Well, I'm I'm on the Xbox One, so when you get an Xbox One, I'll, I'm probably because I I loved World at War. Mm, uh, yeah, and I will probably get the new one because it's going to be the World War II style again. Love it. Yeah, so there's I'm a good chance I'll get into that one for that. Well, and you were always much better online than I was, and yeah. but you never played the actual game. No, I would never play the campaigns. I would pretty yeah. much only just play online. Hmm. So that's all right. Anyway, that's the uh, that's the update on that side. Dakota has us as far as real work here, real things to talk about. Uh, oh no, Audrey. Audrey's near death. When we were driving home from the concert. She announced to the car that she was thinking about getting a flu shot. She was going to get her flu shot Monday. Mm. And I said, I've heard terrible things. Terrible. Bad yep. news. Don't do it. Fake news. She did it anyway. And then uh, she's been, Dakota, what's the, stat- what's the status? I don't want to violate any HIPAA rules, but <laughs> she's not here, so we know it's not good. It's very grim. Yep. She's going to join us. She was going to be in the seat that Danny's in. Um, I'd, I'd tell her, I'm like, listen, the only time I've ever gotten a flu shot was whenever I worked at Ball Memorial Hospital in Muncie. Yeah. And they required it, mm-hmm. and they paid for it. And I was like, and every time that I got one that night, I felt like crap. You had and like half a flu. Yeah. 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 And she was like, nah, I'll be fine. I get one every year. Okay. And then Monday morning she wakes up, and she's like, I'm not going to be able to make it to class. Mm. And I'm like, why? What's wrong? And she goes, I am puking. My head is throbbing. And she was in horrible shape. Well, I guess actually that was Tuesday because she got the flu shot Monday. Right. And then today she gets up and is none better. She's like had a horrible fever, mm. chills, uh, is everything. And like it's like full blown flu, like horrible. Yikes. And I mean, it's like I told these guys before the show even started. I've been with Audrey for five years. I've never seen her this sick. Mm. I've gotten a flu shot once, and it I, I literally got the flu. But see, it's like I get the flu shot, and I get the flu. I don't get the flu shot, I get the flu. So you're, either way, you're going to get it. Right. So why, why, yeah. why decide when you're going to get it the first time, right? Exactly. Yeah. I don't have it. Uh, my I never get it. My yeah. German heritage has provided me with a very strong immune system. You get mm. the flu shot, Danny? No. No, never did. I never did either. No, I think I did once. And I think it was fine. Was that in the old administration? They made you do it? I don't remember what the deal was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I think that Audrey's almost like full-blown Britain <laughs> and very anti-vaxxer. Yeah. Because what's the deal? Because obviously it's like a weekend. <laughs> Britain. <laughs> <laughs> you just got it? I just got it. Yes, yes. Or, uh, yeah. And no, because it's a weakened version of the of the cells, right? Of what they think is going to be the main oh. stem. So if it's year. not, they then just guess, yeah. and then they <laughs> just give sick. you the wrong flu anyway. That's so crazy because every like they always you know push the flu sh- flu shot, but every single person I know is like, no, don't get it. Well, you can only get the one virus one time. Oh, so anytime you get a flu or a cold, a secondary time is a different strand strain of that virus. Interesting. I don't believe it. I don't believe in it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a medical doctor, but. Uh, Let's bring one in. Yeah, we we should definitely should. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. Audrey will be here. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. 
Dakota, what's this thing about this fire? There's a fireman that was fired for bringing a watermelon to work on his first day. You've got that in there. That's our, that's next on the list here, and I've done absolutely nothing to prepare for that. So what uh, what do we know? Okay, so here's the deal. I was on Facebook. Of course. Typically. Always. You want me to take your empty? Yeah, that's fine. And uh, <laughs> Danny's drinking his seconds. They, it didn't <laughs> quite fill Dakota's glass, so Danny's Danny's to- topping it off. Yep. So uh, anyway, I'm I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see this headline: Detroit firefighter fired for bringing watermelon to work. Interesting. And it had a picture of the watermelon, a huge watermelon. A watermelon or the watermelon? <laughs> the watermelon. Oh no. The incident. And, yeah. So I'm like, okay, what's this all about? And click on it, and literally this, okay, so this firefighter, well, he, he's not a firefighter and anymore. Well, he, get, he gets hired. It's a paid position in Detroit. It's not like our volunteer fire department down here. Right. And I guess it's very customary for uh, whenever you get hired there, they take you to the main station, and everybody comes, and typically the guys bring donuts. Okay. And... You kind of hang out with each other, eat donuts. You meet everybody on the crew, whatever. So he he's like, well, you know, he might have been doing the, the Jeremiah thing and not been eating carbs. We don't know. Right. Who knows? Yeah. But he's like, you know what? Watermelon's cheaper. It's the middle of summer. Uh, I'm just going to bring a watermelon. And they made it a race thing, didn't they? It was I Detroit. Like that's exactly where that's it going. It was Detroit. That's the problem. I guess. And in the article... Okay. Did he also have grape Kool Aid? No. <laughs> In the article, it says that uh, immediately, the uh, the people of color that are part of the uh, that are part of the fire staff there were <laughs> offended because he brought watermelon. Jeez. They said it was uh, it was racially insensitive because it's a uh, it perpetuates the stereotype of people of color. I feel like that. It's literally a food. It's that's fruit. People being entirely too sensitive. And we got. He stop. literally. He got fired on the spot. Mm. Like he didn't even make it to. Just can't do nice things. Actual generally. first day of being a fireman. I enjoy watermelons. I love, I watermelon. love watermelon. Yeah, and My I'm terrible. Fruit. And I'm terrible at swimming, and I can't. Like I can jump pretty high. So. <laughs> Harry is not weighed in. I you don't scaled know. the. I don't, know, what, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, so. we need our token to tell us how to feel about this. <laughs> yeah. He's been on here the whole time. He, he uh, keeps now, criticizing now, me and saying, speak into the mic. And now Harry goes quiet. Yep. The we, one moment we need his advice. We need him the most he's right our, now. He's our consulting phone friend his and, friends And Harry is not answering. He's consulting his friend in Detroit. Oh, premiums are due. Stone Aldridge says, oh, this is Boss Hoggle Liberty. It's yeah. a trap. Now Harry's angry reacting. Well, he doesn't no. like the story. He doesn't. You got a guy fired. <laughs> I, like, I like the little orange amp there. You like that? It's I an do. actual amp. Yeah, that no, it's, it's cool. for my like ukulele. That. Really? Yeah, that's my awesome. uke is a, a Les Paul. No kidding. Yeah, so Dakota it's, is it's a bit a of a musician. Set, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's pretty neat. We have a Martin. A Martin? Yeah, Martin uke? ukulele. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a acoustic u- ukulele, as mm-hmm. most are. Yes. Yes. It's not a powered one. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, you can actually turn on the overdrive on that mm-hmm. to where it's like a grunge. And play it on the ukulele. Yeah, it's hilarious. Like the funniest thing you've heard in your life. Oh, I bet it's. I bet it's fantastic. Maybe during the musical interlude, as I try to splice this together. This podcast may be out very late or never, uh, <laughs> much later. Uh, as I try to figure we can't out how to miss export audio, our celebrity guest. Oh no, I know. It, we'll make it work somehow, some way. Uh, it'll at least be on YouTube. Yeah, it'll it'll be there. We'll have it. it. It'll one way or another. We'll make it happen. But uh, we may need some some awkward transitions. So maybe it'll be Dakota on the ukulele. <laughs> I'll scat if you want. Oh, we should get a little scat in here somewhere. What do you got? Well, I've been working on a new ditty. Oh, have you? <clears throat> a five, six, seven, eight, beep, beep, up, beep, beep, up, boop. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. She <laughs> nailed it. That's better than NPR <gasps> right there. <laughs> I'm just, ugh, the NPR music, beautiful. I'm telling you, you're going to start spawning jazz ghosts <laughs> in my house if you keep doing that. Oh my! Not it so would not be appreciated by other guests that end up sitting in that chair. Like everything else, I think we react way too easily and just get butt hurt over stuff. And yeah, that's what it sounds like happened to Detroit for this poor guy. He tries to do one nice thing, yeah, he and just loses brings his a job. watermelon, and he ends up losing his job. And like <sighs> they talk to the fire chief. Fire chief is like your stereotypical fire chief from every movie ever, where he's an old, uh, overweight man with a mustache. <laughs> he's Carl from Family Matters. 
Yeah. Or if you watch Chicago yeah. FD, it's Chief Bowden on that too. It's I can hear my dog. Your dog, is, your dog is upset. <laughs> Speaking upset. of that, I saw Daisy's a trapped. beware of dog sign. Yeah. I didn't see a dog. No, she's, she's here. In, she's in a room in there. Okay. You mean to tell me you hopped a fence when you knew <laughs> that there was a beware the dog <laughs> sign? You should see the dogs I have. <laughs> You're wearing a, a backwards baseball hat and a flannel shirt. That is just like in all of the movies when the guy gets attacked by the dog. So they're wearing that. I hope that I in hope a locked that, case. <laughs> well, safety first. <laughs> right, right. I hope that Zach Bertram saw you <laughs> yes. climbing the fence and the police show up here and like. Well, well Zach <laughs> probably was watching the live feed and knew he was coming. But oh he, yeah, but, that, he, but he was true. And he, what he wanted to watch the show. So when you, when he saw Danny jumping the fence, he said, oh, "I'm just going to see what happens." Well, that is something <laughs> I thought about too. Is like I knocked on the door, nobody came. Well, Did you try the front door, no, or you just assumed you had to come through the gate? No, I tried the handle. And I thought, well, pre- the back door is probably not. Locked. No. But then when I was getting ready to jump the fence, I was like, man, there's a guy with a rifle case getting ready to jump a fence <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> yeah. In this neighborhood. In this neighborhood. Yeah. No, that actually happened to me whenever I was younger. I had to break into my parents' house, mm-hmm. and the police saw me because we lived on Highway 40. And the police officer pulled in the driveway with his lights on. Mm. And he didn't do anything. He was just like, hey, what's going on? And I was like, uh, this is my mom and dad's house. <laughs> 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 Welcome to my house, sir. <laughs> He's like, okay, are your parents home? I'm like, yeah, but they wouldn't answer the door. I was like 12, and <laughs> my friend was right down the street, and it was storming outside, and I was scared of the storm, and I didn't want to stay there, and I didn't have a house key, so I just opened up my bedroom window and took the screen out, and he saw me well, while he's on 40. So you're breaking into your own house. Yeah, so then I had to, I had the window open, so I just yelled. I was like, Mom, Dad. I came outside, and they had to explain to the officer, yeah, this is... This is Dakota, their son. Jeff Vibbert just joined the po- joined the uh, joined the live feed. I'm looking forward to the day that Jeff agrees to do my podcast. Excited. We could probably fit him in sometime in December. I would imagine, maybe. <laughs> maybe. He's a good man. Still not as big of a celebrity as Cat Nagnos. No, Jeff. God no. <laughs> Cat Nagnos is still with Bob and Tom Show in some ways. I and, really uh, want to play. Where you're getting this information from? Yeah. I really want to play Jeff's game, Goblins and Treasures. That he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. That sounds phenomenal. What, tell yeah, me about that. I missed that. Oh, there's there's uh, so much stuff coming out of Barstool. I can't keep up. There's a three-point line. He's uh, he's the goblin because he's the most goblin-like. Of course. <laughs> and uh, he has to try to stop the basketballs from entering the goal above him. And it's uh, it sounded pretty interesting. I'm waiting on an invite. I feel like I could give him a real good run at being come the goblin. Yeah. There you go. So Vibbert, Vibbert came to the Indy 500 party, didn't he? Didn't yeah. come to the infield? Yeah, I was I out in him. the stands. He came out and hung out with you. Made a nice video with Todd. Yeah. Yeah, you and Todd McCona shot, shotgun some beers, and you became a celebrity for a good day. Man. Stone cold Stone beers. cold. Yes, I'm sorry. Not shotgun. Yeah. Very different. It was a good time. Hmm. Yeah. I th- was it you at uh, one of Jeremiah's parties where um, it was everybody was going to shotgun a beer, and it was my first time ever doing it, and you went to do it, and you took the knife and you gently pushed it into the beer can and no beer squirted out. Yes. And I was like, holy cow, this guy's done this. As well. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not Surgical. go to college during the week, but on the weekends I was a very active. He's Purdue University <laughs> knew him well. Yeah. My dad um, got expelled from Indiana State University and was told he was never allowed back on campus. That's impressive for Indiana State. Yeah. That's good. He he was expelled from there. He went to IU East after that, and then he had to drop out of IU East because he had to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it's story time with Dakota today. Yeah, he robbed him and his best friend robbed a gas station of uh, four fifty-gallon trash bags full of cigarettes. <laughs> well, resale if you play Monty I hope, too. I yeah, hope the prosecutor mean, right? made him smoke them all. Yeah. <laughs> In a locked and, uh, closet. <laughs> well, they well they they knew that it was going to be unlocked, so they go there, they steal the cigarettes, and then they leave. And then his friends like, dude, I think that I saw the safe behind the counter and it was unlocked. So he drives back and he stays in the car to be the getaway guy. And his friend goes in, and then all of a sudden the a cop drives by and sees him in there. So they say he drove back to his friend's house and just busts in the door. And his friend's mom and his younger brother are in there on the couch in the living room, and he starts freaking out he's like he's gonna get shot he's gonna get shot (laughs) yes and uh his friend never ratted him out he just called him one day while my dad was at iu east and was like dude i'm facing prison time if i don't turn in who was with me so what dad said then he just called his mom and was like hey mom i'll be going to jail (laughs) (laughs) so that's the story of how my dad went to jail 
<clears throat> okay. Well, uh, we'll gracefully we are wildly trans- off track. We will but. gracefully transition uh, on the Boss Hog of Liberty with Jeremiah Moral, Dakota Davis, featured guest Kat Anagnos, Thank you. and special guest host for the second time, Danny Paul Moral. Danny's wearing his uh, Cubs hat. What did they do in the – they played today, did they not? When I left, it was the bottom of the ninth, and it was 5-0, I believe. Cubs? Are you No. No. Are you so, going to uh, replace that big American flag sign with the, the white and blue W flag? Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they'll go to the final, the deciding game in Washington uh, tomorrow night, I guess? Is that what's going to happen? Yeah, they will be. But uh, it was pretty impressive because Lester actually threw to first base, which never happens, and he did it two times in a row, and he actually tagged the... Uh, um, Rizzo tagged the guy out. There so. we go. That's Danny Morrill on the sports desk for the Boss Hog Liberty. <laughs> we'll continue to check in on him with updates. Uh, yeah, so speaking of sports, we uh, I, I got to attend the Colts uh, the Colts game, the Peyton Manning game on uh, mm. on Sunday, and uh, there was a little bit more security than I than usual, but it was the first NFL game I've attended this year. Mm-hmm. Normally, I go to like almost every home game, but this is the first one I'd gotten to, and yeah. they had real like they didn't have just guys with wands; they had like the gates set up. Yeah, wow. So I was like, well, okay, that's what they're doing this year. No big deal, whatever. I walked in, went inside. They had a huge crowd out front because apparently I had just missed it, but uh, uh, Peyton Manning had been signing autographs and taking pictures of people out by the statue. Ugh. I think while I was there, because I saw like two or three people that I knew, like the mayor of Rushville and uh, Brian Sheehan had some pictures taken with them uh, right there. As, and it was like mm. the exact time I went through and I was just oblivious. I was just trying to get inside with the crowd I was with. Um, but they, uh, so we missed it and I thought, well, maybe that's why the security is up, whatever. When, and I have been, we've been camping, Dakota and I and Audrey and Sarah and the Potters and Morals. We were all camping all weekend, so I didn't pay any attention to the media. I had no idea. And then I'm sitting in my seats, and I hear, I saw there was some tweet that the vice president had left the game because after the national anthem, the walk, the, not the, the Niners had taken an E. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I didn't even know the vice president was here, so whatever. Jeez. And then I'm sitting in the seat, and I saw that it said he, um, he had, sent out a press release, like a formal official press release. Right. And I'm like, we just heard the national anthem like five minutes ago. How in the hell did he send out a press release? It's probably pre-made. Exactly. So it was at that point, I'm like, the son of a gun. This is a total political move. Yeah. Like this is all, that's all what this is about. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the meme. Did you see the meme that I posted in group chat? Uh, I know you did, but it was, was it? it was a, um, vice president Pence's official portrait uh, where he's standing there. Oh, yeah. And it says a uh, paid protester at the yes, bottom. Yes, he's a paid protester. <laughs> yes. Hilarious. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I, I, you know, I am happy though that the Colts stood. Yeah, they did. And it was, I, I just don't care. The whole thing is just care. so, yeah. it's, <coughs> but you don't care, but you appreciate people standing. I is appreciate the way I, w- I would word it. Yeah, but it, it's, See, it's all, yeah. it's all theater. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's it, all theater. I, I I stand. I choose to stand. If somebody doesn't stand, then fine. I'm not going to get. Once again, we get worked up over so much crap that I, I just was don't watching, give a damn. I was watching from my couch, and I didn't stand. Yeah. Did they play the national anthem? Yes. I told Blake, they got one of the guys that's uh, been in the group chat tonight talking to you guys. Uh, I said Garth Brooks is in town. I hope they play Garth. I hope Garth comes out and does it. Mm. And then it was Straight No Chaser, which is an Indiana University legendary band. So Sarah was very excited. I. You know, they're whatever they're they replaced Jim Neighbors, at the Indy 500. So it's not good enough for me, but whatever. <laughs> um, so, they, you know, they played. It was fine. It was good. And you moved on. But it and then he, they just blew it so far out of proportion. See, uh, the yeah. whole thing has been so politicized and I hate it from all sides, of course. Yeah. And it's it, before it was, uh, you know, Colin Kaepernick. He's taken a knee during the national anthem. You saw conservatives become outraged, right? And he had been sitting for, what, six games prior to the kneel? He sat all through preseason. Yeah, and it was – you you never heard anything about it on the media, uh, any um, right-wing news source. You never heard anything about him sitting, nothing about it. And then all of a sudden he starts taking a knee. But one thing that he did correct, in my opinion, is he actually had a foundation. There was money donated it, and he applied it to a cause, opposed to yep. now it's, well, it's we're just show. doing it because we were insulted. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with what you said. Is I like I respect the fact that the fact that the Colts because respected the fact that the vice president, who not only is a Hoosier, 
but now he's the vice president, was in the arena and they stood. I I like that part. Um, I just like that. But I don't know. I kind of I'm on both sides here. Well, we want to be proud of him. You know, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a native and it feels good. And he was our he was our governor, for God's sake. I mean, exactly. And we're very hopeful that his brother is going to appear on the show at some point. Come on the show, Ooh. Greg, when you announce you're running. Very so. exciting. So, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just one of those things where people just paint certain politicians as actual Satan. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. On both that, sides. Like, you get you get it to where I mean, I'm glad to hear you say that because it's it's to the point to where in modern politics, if you don't agree with the leftist opinion, then you are automatically a Nazi. Exactly. Like you you believe in free speech. You're a Nazi. Right. You Oh, well you think that the people in Charlotte had a had were able to should be able to voice their opinion? You're well then you probably think that Hitler did nothing wrong, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, it was just that was that was quite interesting. But I agree too with the fact that before it was like, okay, you had a cause for it. It's just like it's a show. It's like Yeah, that's all it is. It It's like fake social media campaigns, like, oh, I support the victims of the hurricane. I'm going to change my Facebook profile. Cool. You yeah, know what I mean? You really or, did something. Yeah. Or we were talking about this in one of my class. It's like, or, okay, you tweet out how outraged you are about the Las Vegas shooting and you, you know, make all these big political posts. And then two days later, you're talking about Kylie Jenner's pregnant. What? Or you dump ice water on your head and do nothing else besides that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, but I do. I find it pretty interesting. I, I look at the NFL or anyone in that position solely as entertainment, and I draw the line there. Yeah. So I don't really look for them for any guidance in any way. Yeah. So you're a paid employee. I can't do whatever I want when I'm at my employer. There's rules True. and guidelines. So if the NFL wants to mandate you do something – you should do it. I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm I'm fine if the NFL wants to mandate, okay, we're losing a lot of money, we're losing viewership, we need people to stand for the national anthem. What I'm not okay with is the president calling out and saying anybody who doesn't stand for my song needs to be fired. Because the president is the person who is literally the figurehead of everything that America stands for. And if there's one thing that America stands for, it's it's freedom. Yeah, and it's freedom of speech. The president being, I'm I'm not going to say that the president shouldn't be able to voice his opinion, but the fact that he's calling for people to be fired from his position is it is a wrongdoing on his part. Is yeah. the protest right or not? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's whatever to me. I'm not going to I'm not going to glorify it to where I think these people should have the platform and the attention that they're that they're craving. We, yeah, because ultimately it's harmless, and if you're going to protest, they're yeah. doing it in a very civil way. They yeah. are, and it's it's respectful. What they're doing is right. That they're not out rioting in the streets. It, right, they, breaking they have a doors. they if, have a legitimate problem with the way that society is ran. If the and, NFL decides to uh, to actually make them stand, I think you're going to see a lawsuit from the players' union. Saying that you've changed my working conditions, and then they're going to have a suit that's going to last two or three more years, and this fight's yep. just going to continue on and on and on. See, and I just think it just goes back to the for the majority of the people, it's outrage unless they share your opinion, right? Because you really don't care. Nobody I mean, like, cares. It, it's just it's yeah. like, well, that's wrong, and I'm going to get worked up over it, and and you will be until the next whatever the hell the next controversy is going to be. I mean, I'm not and this even is a, it this week, right? Here I am talking about it, and I don't even watch football. Well, right, and it, like what you said. There's no right or wrong. There's really only wrong. Like there's there's nothing that you can do that's going to appease everyone. No matter what, you're going to piss off someone right. because either you're not following through with what you started off and doing, or that you're just disrespecting the flag. Which it's a disrespect to have the flag in that position anyway. So right, it's it. It's, it's hilarious. It's pretty hypocritical of the vice president to show up just to know that it was going to happen and walk out and have that fight. And it's hypocritical on the other side as well, uh, because people are acting like they care and they, you know, or that, you know, it, yeah. The it, it, the biggest thing for me is like everything starts coming out. Okay, how much does it cost to have Air Force Number Two, which is the plane that the vice president rides on? Right. How much does it cost to have him uh, go?
go to these different locations. How much did it cost to have him fly out um, to Indianapolis and then fly from Indianapolis back to Las Vegas? Yeah. And it was uh, it was like two hundred forty two thousand dollars, roughly a quarter million, and uh, that is that's just the plane ride. Yeah, and that that's not talking about the uh, the police escort, the secret service that had to be paid. That's that's not including any of that. Yeah, but and, to an extent, I mean, the vice president's going to come back to Indiana all the time anyway. Right. I, some of that stuff is just, it's so ancillary, it's just, it's whatever. See that, yeah, but that, I mean, that wasn't my point. My point was that it, the money and the numbers start coming out, and then every person in my friends list that is a leftist starts sharing. They start reposting. All of a sudden they, they saying, care about money. Yeah, all of a sudden they care about fiscal responsibility. These people that were advocating for uh, health care for all and they're advocating for free education all of a sudden care about the, the quarter million dollars. Yeah, the three hundred thousand right, exactly. dollars that was added to the that was taken out of the money that we have in the budget that's to a good fly point. pins to do this. And it, it's like why do you care now? Like Yeah, that's a really good point. The one person that was very credible to me in the whole thing was Karen Pence, who showed up wearing her Peyton Manning jersey to Peyton Manning Day. Uh. That was an old ten-year-old <laughs> Peyton Manning jersey that still had like the Danny. You know this. Yeah, it it wasn't. From, it, it wasn't like the nice Reebok one. It was the. It's got the horseshoe on the side, yeah. and it's yeah. a screen print Walmart I have, jersey. I have one like that from Meyer. Yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, thing. it's not like she didn't just go get that and have somebody send it in and be like, "Oh, Mrs. Pence, you're going to wear this." She had that son of a bitch in a in in her <laughs> in her drawer since like two thousand and nine, like the White House. Or yeah, wherever that she they had live. like from yeah, she's had it the entire time. And, and then it's like the one my mom would wear if we got mom a jersey, but we didn't want to spend a hundred bucks on a good right, jersey. Exactly. We got her a thirty dollar jersey. <laughs> well, because she doesn't care anyway, right? But they he didn't even take a, an actual picture at the game either. He used a four year old picture and just put a new filter on it. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did see, retweet one from when he was governor. See, just and, so many. He does this stuff. He did it with. He, he's made so many mistakes, and it, they're so predictable that he did it when he announced his state-run media thing, the Just In deal. He he just can, and he did it with the religious freedom bill, and he did it with this one, and he just doesn't. He can make a political point and have a point, but he does it in such a piss poor way that it's is, just sad. See, are we saying, and I really like him. Is, I really are do we like saying him that guy. Mike Pence is the best and worst politician? Here's he's okay. Just politically, not that savvy sometimes. But this is what I think. I and this. Might be a little conspiracy theorist. Shocking. I feel like <laughs> there is no way that there isn't somebody on his team who's like, mm, maybe you shouldn't do this. Why don't we take a new picture? Or mm, maybe you shouldn't walk out. I just think it's a big distraction from something else. Yeah. So think about what's going on. Like people, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, a, there's it's a huge distraction because at the same time, so what, uh, President Donald Trump said that he wants to increase the uh, United States nuclear arsenal by ten times. Yeah, that story came out. Apparently, in July, the uh, the Secretary of State and the pre- and the President had some meeting, and he was getting up to speed on nuclear stuff. And he called for the increase. The U.S. in, in this meeting, he called for the uh, the U.S. to increase their nuclear arms by ten times, which ten is the exact times. opposite like, of policy for the last forty years, where people like Dick Luger have been trying to drive down the arms. Right, and he's calling to just like completely throw away all of the progress that's, in the that's, last fifty years. Can we point out for a second that that's not what he campaigned on? No. Yeah. But he's he doesn't know what he's doing. Well, I don't see. see I don't what, believe that, that. That's where I disagree. I think Trump knows exactly what's what he's. He's doing. the frontman, and I don't Trump, even think it's like Mike Pence behind him. I really just think it's. Trump is GOP, not the whatever. idiot that he is portrayed to be. Trump no. is not the idiot that he makes the world see him as. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he is an expert at playing this game. Right, and the way the way I see it, do you know that? Are you familiar uh, familiar with the TV shows um, like House of Cards? Yeah, of course. And then Scandal. Oh yeah. The way I see it as okay. I love some uh, some. Uh, uh, Sean Ryan. No, 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 no. Joshua Molina. Okay, yeah, yeah. And the, the way I see it From is the West that, Line, of course, of course, the way I see it is that okay. There's the real version of politics in in the world, the House of Cards, if you yeah. will, um, where it's you know a TV show focused on a lot of like legislation or even the West Wing, legislation. It's very focused on that. It's very smart political. The average person doesn't want that. They want the scandal version. They want the watered down drama version. They want the, he's not at the, he didn't stand up or he left the game early or she's wearing, he did the old picture. That's what they want. There's a lot of murders and scandal though. True, but they, but it's, I guess it's the drama. They want the drama of it. If Hillary was president, there would have been a lot of murders and people disappear all the time. I don't know. Eminem might be needing to look out right now too. He had a pretty big video release. So yeah, what happened? 
D. To Seth Rich. <laughs> uh, did you see the We Are Libertarians Instagram feed, everybody, today? Uh, oh, there was not. a meme shared that I just laughed. It was great. Um, it said, it's a raw story headline. I don't know if it's true or not. It says, imagine trying to explain this from someone from 2006. And the headline, potential Senate candidate Kid Rock fires back at Eminem for his anti-president Trump <laughs> freestyle rap. Yeah. Good have you, shit. have any of you guys ever, have you sat down and watched, uh, uh, Kid, any of Kid Rock's speeches? I have not. He uses no. the same rhetoric as Trump. No, he, yeah, but he literally, he goes, he's like on stage, right? Yeah. And he's, at, he's on stage and he has a band behind him, his performance band. And he's, he's, sti- he's standing in front of the podium, like a, a professional podium. And he's up there and he'll say something and he'll make bullets, like bullet points. And it's all rhyming like a poem. <laughs> and then behind him, like the band will go, Yes. And he'll be like, because America is free. <laughs> and these politicians in Washington. We're going to have President Camacho before this is over. We are heading that path. <laughs> I love it. This is. And like the crowd. The idiocracy is, just, is coming. It, oh, I love it. And that that is one thing that was talked about on the We Are Libertarians podcast during the entire election. And it was like, while Greg Lenz was a. Uh, was basically campaigning for Trump. Yeah. And he's talking about um, just the pure amount of ridiculousness that has yeah. been brought into it. And, like, you you watch all these things and you you think about it, but then you see the sound, you only see the sound bites that are put out by mainstream media. Exactly. If you, if you pay attention to what he's actually saying, if you pay attention to the things that he says professionally, and then you pay attention to his tweets... You you can pick up on it easily that Trump is is literally doing everything that he can to to distract the oh, media yeah. and to to keep them on their toes and keep them away from what is actually going on. Exactly, he is an expert at this. Oh yeah, it's, it's he's a showman. It's like watching House of Cards in real life. Like it's actually happening. Mm-hmm. It's I'm all about it. Incredible. Love that TV show. I do too. I love it so much. So good. Uh, I th- bought a rowing machine because of <laughs> I, I I've started rowing because of that. Yeah. I, I love. Okay. Can sometime can we, you you should come up to Muncie and we should go on the White River and actually row because I've always wanted. to I do would do that. that. I've always. I wanted would kayak. To, well, I mean, I have a kayak and a canoe. I've always wanted to like actually like proper row on an actual river. Like crew. Crew. Yeah. I've yeah. always wanted to do crew. Yeah, that would be fun. I've never done that. We should do but it. I, I do have a Jeremiah kayak. Jeremiah is going to be in the back. Left, <laughs> right. I don't want to sing, so that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah can be the drummer. He's just up there going, boom, 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 <laughs> yeah. boom. I, shouldn't our, our one of our house percussionists do that? I, yeah. Get Kid Rock's back. Uh, I mean, dance. I have the I have the djembe downstairs. You can use. So, when Trump came out or Pence came out and said that he asked him to leave, do you think that that made Pence look like more pathetic? It's just, it, just I think everybody looks at the, anything that Trump tweets out now at this point you just you just roll your eyes and it rolls off water like a duck's back. Yeah, and I feel like it's like with with Mike Pence, he obviously doesn't care about his image because of the whole riffraff thing. Like he does I don't think he truly cares about his personal image. Like you go on his Twitter and just all the replies, like the top replies are just garbage towards him, and I think they're just to that point where it's just like doesn't care, which is Yeah. Which is good, but also kind of dangerous if you think about it. Because how far can a person go with that mental, like, thought process? He he knows what's happening. Oh yeah. They have a. I I wouldn't be surprised if if Trump has got a comprehensive plan already for the uh, twenty twenty election, and everything is just leading up to it. You think he'll run again? I don't think he'll be in office. I, I honestly think like, I think Mike Pence will be president by the time they get to the next election. Mm-hmm. I do, do. You think so? Yeah, I do. So, I don't. I don't know. I think that's what the only think? reason why the GOP would have put Trump in place is if he was with Mike Pence because that's what they foresaw. True. And with Mike Pence, it was that a was, hostile takeover. Yeah. No, they listen, didn't want that. Listen, <laughs> two terms, two genders, two scoops. two scoops. Deal with it. You're right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we are getting to that point in the day that uh, we do our final thoughts. Danny, I know you haven't quite prepared anything yet, so we'll give you a second or two. Cat's the old pro here. 
yeah. having having appeared before. So we'll give her this first crack at final thoughts tonight on the Boss Hog Delivery Podcast. Second time as a featured guest. No, thank you so much for inviting me on again. Um, like I said, on or off air, both huge fan of Boss Hog Liberty. Love what you guys are doing here. Love the studio. Love the whole idea of it. Had a great time. I love you guys treat me like royalty when I come in. You are royalty, cat. It's, it's wonderful. No, it was, it was a good discussion too. I yeah. like, I know I'm usually the comedic relief, but, uh, I like to get kind of deep in to politics a lot. This sometimes. is as deep as we yeah, can it's, get. It's pretty disappointing you're not our token lesbian anymore though. Yeah, you did fail us there. I know. But well, good luck. Good national. luck with the new endeavor. Hopefully you don't have to sell the Subaru. I know you're upside down on it. <laughs> well, national I'm, coming out day. I'm only going to assume that's real. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> you, you and Greg. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we didn't bring it up, but okay. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Danny, Jeremiah, Danny was late arriving. <laughs> Jeremiah made some comments throughout the show. You might not... You might have... Yeah, but it. here's the thing about Jeremiah. He treads very close to that line mm-hmm. to where you're thinking you know what he's talking about, but he never actually confirms it. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, he confirms it with a little smug... Just a little, little wink. A little wink, a little grin. But, but to the yeah. audio, to the audio person, you just... I can't be on the edge. You just don't know what he really meant. Exactly. The video is going to give me away, though, in that high-quality 320p that we have, <laughs> thanks to the Sarah Potter iPhone. Exactly. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. It's exciting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Central Indiana forever now. She's looking. She she's told us that she loves that oh. mid-century modern house down here. Oh, so. Okay. Let's Newcastle. All her Newcastle dreams. That's just because I'm obsessed with the Twilight books, and that looks like their house. This is uh, this is being here is like being. <laughs> Dakota in, knows exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. Being here I is do. like I being actually in Parks and Recreation. <laughs> yeah, Whenever it awesome. first came out, I read all the books and watched all the movies. The house kind of looks like it. It does. I love it. I got him. Yeah, see, I can see it now. <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> I, I have no Twilight references, Danny. Do you? Do you have? Like, I've watched all the movies multiple times. <laughs> have you really? Yeah. Kind of looks because like you it. like them, or yeah. Actually, the first time I watched all of them, I was with my buddy Lauren, which is hilarious. If you know Lauren, <laughs> he's the biggest meathead you can meet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah they, like, were, they were entertaining. Like Mitchell Hutchin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Final thoughts. Nick. Yeah, so Kat, uh, uh, you got a show tomorrow night, I guess, right? Big We Are Libertarians yeah. thing to plug. You got, uh, yeah, we are how do we follow you? Uh, follow me personally on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. A lot of Snapchat followers. Really? Oh, yeah. It's nice. Uh, just at Kat and Agnos. Um, but no, thanks a lot for having me on. Love it here. You'll be getting another thank you note. Excellent. It'll go in the museum with all the others. Perfect. Glad. Right. And then sometimes here. we see you on the uh, the Bob and Tom uh, weekend review, right? Yes, you can. Fridays, yeah. Friday afternoons. Uh, it's hard to make the drive from school to Indianapolis, um, so I don't go all the time as yeah. much as I'd like to. But yeah, catch me Friday afternoons for the weekend yeah. review. You, Jess Alsman, and uh, and Grace, Grace Singer, Singer usually, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But no, Very thanks cool. for having me. Love awesome. tonight. Well, thanks for being with us, Kat. Anytime. Daniel Paul, baby brother, pinch hitter at the last minute. Started this podcast when we started. We pushed record the first time before I, the recorder failed on me. You were sitting on your your couch watching from home and you tagged in welcome yeah thank you no i was pleased to uh, invite myself yep so that's a plus <laughs> uh this is my second time being second fiddle to the featured star so yes. i'm happy to be a part of it it's definitely enjoyable do you want do you want top billing one day do you feel like you I'm can carry not, a show i'm not that interesting <laughs> so i'd rather just sit back and, and be partake the that way yeah i can be your sports desk but yeah. no it's fun you guys have a great studio It'll be our chick mcgee hey <laughs> i'd like to be <laughs> that guy's fairly successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little successful. bit. Solid. I mean, I actually like Chick is probably my favorite character on the Bob and Tom show. I would agree with that. What He's do you mean? Awesome. What do you mean Chick's a character? <laughs> Chick is real. <laughs> <laughs> They're all characters, Jerry. I'm sorry, I had to break this to you. Just like we're all characters here. It's all theater, just like I, walking through I, security. I, uh, I will plug this in. Real quick, um, sure. Was, sure. Take away from my baby brother. It's, not, it's, it's fine. It's, I'm just. I have one moment. You took it from me. So this well, was you'll get it back, and we'll give you a fresh start. But uh, I was listening to the Bob and Tom show one time, and Grace Singer was on there, mm-hmm. and it was after the first time that I met her, and they were talking about Tom, and mm-hmm. she goes, "Actually, somebody this weekend asked me. They said, so you work for the Bob and Tom show?' And she said, "Yeah," and she said, and this person asked me, is Tom really that big of a dick in person? <laughs> and that was me. I was the one that asked for that at the party. 
Yeah. Wow. And so like I'm famous now. It was you. I'll yeah. give you a shout out. I'll Grace? give you like a little wink or something when I'm on. There we go. We can yeah. review next time. Grace is amazing. Kenny Schrader, the NASCAR driver, Kenny Schrader always used to pull on his ears for his kids. If you could just pull on your ear one time, we'll know that's for the boss hog of Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little, little tug. Yeah. So, whatever you want. Or do the Scott Pruitt hide on my wife and kids at home. Uh, anyway, the, uh, Grace, when she comes to the party, she always brings a bottle of Pedialyte. Yeah. Which yeah. is the greatest thing ever. She knows we're going to be hung over and miserable. Changer. She's amazing. So yeah. Good girl. Big fans Love of Grace her. around here. Back to Danny. I, I don't have much more to add. Your studio looks great. Proud of you guys. How do people follow looks you? Great. Do you want these people, do you want our people following you on the interwebs? Uh, uh yeah, I've got a Facebook. And Twitter. It's, you are very close friends with Dan Dockich on uh, 1070 The Fan, the MS station in Indy. That's true. He, uh, he does tweet me back and forth. So does Michael Grady quite a bit. Um, my Twitter is at DMAXJuiced. And then my Instagram is. <sighs> Wow. That's just me trying to take a picture of myself. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it's, it's DP moral. I think it's what it is. Sure. So, all yeah. right. Well, Danny, thanks for coming on. This is uh, this is a lot of fun. We needed yeah. a we needed a fourth in here for sure. Oh, so, I feel like I was the uh, the backbone here. You really honest. you really carried, carried the us. Show. You're mm-hmm. the bass player. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With no rhythm. That's all right. I'm the uh, You're immoral. We don't expect to have any rhythm at all. That our great grandfather played in Sammy Davis's band. Our grandfather played in uh, in Korea. Uh, during the Korea War, he was a he's a drummer in Germany for the army. Wow! And uh, our our father was uh, in a cover band and did a great job and played all through high school and still still messes around with percussion. Danny and I have absolutely no talent whatsoever. <laughs> we are disappointed. Skips a generation. It, it it was good for three, and then for us, we're like, ah, screw you. Yep. Not there. Not there. So, mm. oh well. Dakota, final thoughts, man. All right. I had a lot of fun on this episode. First of all. Kat, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. It's been it was great. our big episode uh, 25, which means we're a quarter of a way to 100. And mm-hmm. we've been doing this for about six months. Exciting. The big silver anniversary episode, yeah. the 25th. I, I was going to pop some champagne, but then I realized our celebrity guest wasn't 21 yet, so she had to keep drinking water. She's Close. invited us next month. D- you two, by the way, November 2nd birthdays. Danny and Danny really? and Kat. Same yeah, birthday. I'm, Exactly 10 years older than you. Yeah. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> it's exciting. November 2nd, I just, not because it's my birthday, I just think it's a cool date. Yeah, see, Good I think time. that's what turned me off to politics so much at a young age, is I had so Election much, day. Oh, I, I got effed <laughs> over. <laughs> I remember uh, second grade, we had the uh, George W. Bush and John Kerry. Oh, 2004, second yeah, grade. So much younger. It's I'm little. I like I'm, it. I'm young. Yeah, I think that Dakota was, does it to me all the time. I think that was the year we had like a mock vote in the classroom, and obviously I'm from Northern Indiana, so everybody voted for uh, Bush. But I remember being like, <laughs> "It's my birthday, guys." Yeah, I I remember campaigning. Like, Nobody care. Just vote. <laughs> vote. Damn it. I remember campaigning nonstop for every birthday, whether it was David McIntosh, Tom Saunders, or Mike Pence, perhaps. Yeah. But, wow. Uh, First thing I did when I turned 18, uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, my mom took me to vote in like our, not even, it wasn't even a general election. It was like for city council. Yeah. <laughs> Felt pretty cool though. Well, Felt congratulations cool. on the big birthday. Thank you. Yeah, 21. It'll be soon. So excited. It's going to be great. It's awesome. Thank you. I'm going to have to take off another vacation day. I got to take one off for Dakota's bachelor party and now I got to take one the day before because I'm going to be too hungover from Kat's party. It's well, going to be, it's yeah. going to be a fun night. Is that, are you going? I might, yeah. It's a Tuesday, it's a Tuesday night. I, so like, it, yeah, it's 20 minutes away. I can hang out with you for a little while. What are you doing for your 21st birthday? Uh, my roommates and I were just having a little party to pregame before I, midnight. And then once midnight hits, going to the two bars in Muncie. You guys going to go hit up the triangle? The chug? The triangle? That's over triangle. by my office. Is, is B here now still there in Muncie? Yes. Oh, uh, isn't that a hellhole? <laughs> yeah. The, the triangle is B here a now has got the big hole, and it's the, yeah, it's a yeah. circle around, and then you go down to the basement, and you got the terrible things drawn went in the to like a Yeah, went to like a live concert thing there once. It's an 18 and up, so it's mm-hmm. uh, it an interesting place. But yeah, the Chug and Brothers are the two big bars at Ball you guys, State University. you got to go to the triangle. What is that? I had a it coworker the biggest, get stabbed at the Triangle once. It is the biggest dive bar in Muncie. If you know me, and Jeremiah found this out about me, I am all about the dive bar scene. Have you been to be here now? <laughs> you might like I it. I never have. <laughs> because that's as dive as it goes. Yeah. I mean, there's... Even more so than the Triangle? Completely. There's like 70-year-old couches. That's their seating. And they oh, serve yeah. hot dog jambalaya. And oh. Yeah. See, that, yeah, groovy. that sounds that's like the only my word, place. Groovy. 
I love the dive bar scene. Well, you better and come up. Newcastle has a huge dive bar scene, so you'll have I'm to come down here. And literally, every you. every bar is a shitty dive bar in Newcastle. I'm moving here. You don't understand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Scooters is coming. a high quality establishment. I'm going to go there Saturday. If anyone would like to meet up with me and uh, play billiards and smoke smoke cigarettes and drink Jameson, I won a cornhole tournament there once. <laughs> yep, that's that's how divey it is. <laughs> Or just how Newcastle is. No, it'd be divey if you lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I came in fourth place in the cornhole tournament at <laughs> Scooters. That's really still, what happened. Still got I just the trophy. Didn't want to admit it. I went, uh, we went there on St. Patty's Day. Like 300 people. Yeah. I saw the, I saw the video. There was a certain individual that was all over your future sister-in-law in yep. the videos. Yep. We are not going to mention his name. We won't. But, uh, I hear that he's getting married and congratulations. Um, so, uh, yeah. Anything else, Dakota? Follow we, you, People know how to follow you at this point. Yeah. At Otokad Savant on Twitter and Dakota Davis on Facebook. Dakota at BossHogLiberty.com. Uh, I'm Jeremiah. I appreciate everybody listening to us and being a part of this. Uh, m- the one thing I ask from you, we are trying to get to 100 subscribers on the YouTube. So find us on, on, on the YouTube channel. We're posting our stuff there. I want to have Facebook.com slash BossHogLiberty. I need to have 100 subscribers to get that done. So... That's our next step. If you're listening to this, just jump over there. We've click only subscribe. got like 31. Yeah, well, 31 in a week is not bad. No. We've that's, got one, that's one or good. two videos out there. Um, and honestly, depending upon how my editing skills are, the YouTube page may be your best chance to actually hear this entire episode. You may get a join-in-progress version uh, where we force you. Maybe that's what I'm going to sell this. Is I'm going to say, okay, if you want to listen to the entire episode, you have to go to the YouTube page and subscribe. Otherwise, you get the last 45 minutes of the podcast. There you go. Because Jeremiah screwed up the... Uh, Screwed up the, screwed it up. He's an epic failure sometimes. Anyway, uh, Boss Hog Liberty, we appreciate Kat, Danny, and Dakota as always, and we will see you all next time. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at wearelibertarians.com. <laughs>